So in this video, I'm going to show you how to add auto sorting to your Google Sheet. Let's say you're entering some projects and you want this to automatically resort in order of due date. I will show you a quick and simple script that'll do that. Or if you edit a date, it will also resort that automatically as well. Let's start by creating the app script. We'll go to extensions and app script, and we'll start scripting here. Let's zoom in a little bit and start writing our script here. I'm going to use a on edit function. And so I put function on edit, and the spelling is important. It needs to be on edit just like this. And then you can do E or event. That part does not matter. And then what we'll do is we need to get a few things. So we'll start with getting the range and we can get this from our event object. And so E dot range. And then we can get our source sheet or tab. And so we'll do let source equal E dot source get active sheet. And then we can get a few other things like the column that got edited. And so this script will run every time you edit the sheet. And then this E will contain data about that edit. And so we're getting the range that was edited, the tab that the edit occurred on, the column that you edited, and then finally the value that you entered. Just like that. And then let's rename this script project real quick. Auto sort rows. And then let's finish this up. So we're going to add a if condition because we don't want this just to add new rows every time you change a cell or edit something. So we want to do an if statement and we'll wrap our conditions inside of these parentheses and then we'll add some more curly braces. And so what is going to be in our if statement? So there's a couple things we could look at. So one is Maybe we only want this to run on certain tabs, or maybe we only want to not run on certain tabs. Let's say we only want to run on one tab. And we could say source dot get name equals to data. And so one thing to keep in mind is there's two equals here because we're comparing, not assigning. And this is actually uppercase. I think this will still render. I don't think this is case sensitive, but we'll go ahead and make sure. We have that there. So currently this would run every time you made any edit here. So we don't want that to be the case. We want to add a little bit more. So in this case, we're going to use date as our trigger column. So whenever I add a new date in this column, I want to resort by that date. And so we'll say end column equal to three. So notice in our if statement, we're using two equal signs for comparative. And so we're comparing is source name equal to data and so two ampersands combines two conditions. So we want both of these to be true. So if the tab name is data and the column is equal to three, then it will do it. And we could we could go ahead and go with that if we want, or we could potentially add one more and value is not equal to blank. So we can do something like that. We can leave that off either way. And then what we need to do is actually apply our sort. So we'll use our tab that we have here, source, get range, and then we'll start with our first row, which would be row two. And so basically we wanna select all of our data and sort that. And so we'll start row two, column one, and then we'll do source.get last row. And then we're gonna subtract one because we're starting at two. And then one more source dot get last column, and that will get all of our data. And then we can do dot and sort. And then inside here, we're going to use curly braces and then specify a column. And so in this case, we probably want to sort by column three again. And then we specify ascending true or false. So in this, and then I'm going to go ahead and just bump this down. You can bump and go across a line there, but this just makes it a little more visible here. So sort, we're doing column three, which is our date column. And then we're going to sort it 
ascending, which means the oldest date would be first. So if we wanted the oldest date in the bottom, we would just change it to false. So we have all that we need here for this to run. So let's go ahead and check it out. And so if I add a new date here, so we have 11, 1 through 12, 31. So if I add a new date, let's say October 31st, it's going to go ahead and sort it back to there. So let's add another one let's do 15. So that should go up at the top there. Now, what happens if we change this date, let's say to November 9th? Now it sorts down here. So this will automatically sort if you update a date or you add a new date in this row. Now, if you want to sort by a different column, then you just change this three to whichever column it is. So one, two, three. So you could sort by project name, you could sort by PM, you could sort by any column. You could actually sort by multiple columns as well. And so the way you do that, if you want to sort by multiple columns, is instead of this, you would do inside of an array. So you add these square brackets, and then you can copy and paste this and determine multiple columns. So let's say we want to sort first by due date, then by project name, or maybe PM, let's do PM. So then we do that due date, then by PM. And then we can determine if we want ascending true or false on this one as well. So the way this works when you do multiple, and you can do this as many times as you want, and you just basically copy and paste this. So comma in between curly braces with a column and ascending true or false. And it sorts in order. So it's going to sort by this first, then this, then the next one, and so forth. Let's go ahead and test this out. So we're going to have to probably delete some of these. And then let's do some of these with the same date, just to make this clear. So Katie should go above Wayne, just like that. And then let's add Daniel 11 1. So now it should be Daniel Katie Wayne. Yep, there we go. And then if we add another Wayne, should sort up there as well. Just like that. So that is how you can sort by multiple. We could change this to project name instead. And so then we just change that to two. And then if we just change another one here, we could just change it to 1230. And then these just resorted by project name instead of by PN. And then let's finish by looking at the different ways we can set up the tabs here. So right now we have it set up to only run on the tab called data. And so if we wanted to make this run in every tab except for data, we would change this double equals to a exclamation point equals. So that instead of saying source dot get name is equal to data, now we're saying is not equal to data. So for example, if you had a tab named settings and that was the only tab you didn't want the script to work on, then this would be all that you would need to do. Now, if you had a couple tabs you didn't want to work on or a couple tabs that you did want to work on, well, you, you could put it in here, but you probably, you'd have to wrap it with some parentheses to make that statement work on its own. So you could do that. Or another way you could handle it is wrap this whole if statement inside of another one. And so you can put an if statement here and then those curly braces. In this case, just make sure you put that last curly brace down here below this one. So you can kind of see how this one's here and then this one's here. And so now inside this parentheses, we can set up our tab settings. And so whether you have a couple that you do not want it to be, and so we do and in this instance, and so we could do settings, and then this one could be, let's say, summary. And then in this case, because we have an and, if either of these is true, if it's settings or summary, then this won't run because this will evaluate to false. Now, if we wanted to run on more than one tab, and so we wanted to set, let's say, two or three tabs that it would run on, then we could do something like this. We could do data, we could do leads, maybe another one would be projects or something like that. Um, in this case, we want to make sure we change this ampersands to types. And so this is right above the enter key on my keyboard. And so we could do something like this and do projects. 
and this work on data, leads, or projects. All right, so let's go ahead and reset this now. So we'll just leave it like this. And maybe we'll put it back to the way we had it originally, just to simplify this, and then get rid of our wrapping if statement. And there we go. Now it works just on that data tab, which is the name right here. 